Da skal vi ha siste innlegg før en ny pause. Da er det Stanislav Merle som skal på scenen. Han er fransk. Han jobbet som prosjektleder for solkraftverk i Frankrike. Kom til Norge for fire år siden. Startet da med å jobbe på vitenskapsavdelingen til den franske ambassaden i Norge. Nå er han solenergirådgiver i Multikonsult. Han skal snakke om fremtidens energisystemer, desentralisert elproduksjon, energistyring og lagring, og hvordan sikre stabilitet i nettet. Og han har spurt om å få lov å snakke på engelsk, noe vi selvsagt har sagt ja til. Vi er jo glade for at han ikke skal snakke fransk. Takk, Jørne. Takk. Kan du høre meg? Ja. Yeah, I'm sorry for the English. Uh, I know that Zeb is very international, so it shouldn't be a problem. And actually, even after four years, I feel way more comfortable in English. Norsk er et ganske vanskelig språk, da. So yeah, as Anne told you, I'm a solar energy consultant in, uh, in Multiconsult. And I'm going to give you an introduction today about uh, how solar power can actually stabilize, give stability to the grid. Because... Talk. Because we speak about, um, that's actually the concept of today, we speak about uh, nullet slips big till nullet slips bu. Uh, so the grid actually, because everybody is speaking about solar power injecting to the grid, but what does that do to the grid? Uh, so I'm going to just give you a small introduction about solar energy first. Uh, speak a bit about smart home solutions, what we call smart home solutions. Um, a bit about inverters, which are the key of a solar system. And I'm going to end up with a smart grid that I guess everybody heard about. Uh, so solar energy first, uh, just as a little reminder, because I know it's very often unclear, there is a huge difference between solar power and solar thermal. Uh, the difference is in the title, act in the title actually, but solar power gives electricity and solar thermal gives heat. Uh, we're going to focus today on solar power, uh, PV, as we call it. Uh, PV is actually the physical process of this uh, semiconducting material getting light and giving back electricity. So that's how a solar PV installation looks like. Uh, for those of you who didn't see that before, that's actually a very simple technology. You just need your solar panels, which are producing DC current, and you need an inverter to convert it into AC current, alternating, so you can actually inject it to the grid. So what is so exciting about, uh, about PV? That's actually the cost uh, curve. That's a very simple technology, and we saw a crazy evolution in the last years uh, in the cost of PV. It actually went down of 60% in the last, uh, the last five years, and we see now a curve of minus 10% a year, actually. Uh, so, of course, it gets to more installations, and that's the same curve, basically, but on the reverse. Uh, from 2008 until uh, last year, it has been multiplied by like 600%, uh, the total installation of PV in the world. So that's a huge thing. That's the uh, energy source in the world right now, which has the fastest growing uh, rates. And it actually won't stop here. Uh, that's some market scenarios from diverse uh, institutions. Um, even the most conservative scenario says that it's going to be doubled uh, in the five years coming. So actually now, we could see, because it all started with some support from governments uh, for renewable, uh, even now, it's on its track. And actually, without support, it is profitable and it is affordable. So that's a very nice uh, worldwide idea. But what happens in Norway, actually? Uh, that's an interesting figure. It's actually pretty old in Norway. Uh, everybody uses that in Hütter, uh, on boats, on telecommunication systems in the mountain. And we saw a very interesting thing happening last year. Uh, a lot of PV installed in Norway, which is exciting. So actually, one analyze of that could be that it's just the beginning of the curve we saw for the worldwide installations. That I don't know, but I hope so. 
Um, so what we see now, because actually, uh, as I said from this morning, we hear about yearly numbers. I'm gonna produce that amount of solar energy in the year, and I'm gonna use that amount of energy in the year. But it's not that simple. Uh, that's of course a good, a good number for the reports and stuff, but in practice, that's a bit different, because the big thing with solar energy is of course that it's weather dependent. So that's a kind of typical uh, curve during one day uh, for Oslo, actually, when you have here the solar production and in blue, a typical consumption in the house for four or five people. Uh, so you have the breakfast peak, somebody coming back for lunch, even if it's not very Norwegian, uh, and the peak uh, dinner, watching TV, stuff like that. So that doesn't really fit together. And getting that amount of energy into the grid to use after that amount of energy again back from the grid, that's not very, that's not very effective. Uh, so what we see in Germany is a big trend in Germany now is the smart home solutions. In the basics, nothing new. The big point is actually the tele telecommunication systems. Uh, so that's a house with PV production still connected to the grid with battery storage. And, and the big revolution here is actually the telecommunication between your energy management system and every equipment in your house. It can actually read the weather forecast for the next hours from internet. So the big point is the system is gonna tell to your house that in the next three hours you're gonna have sun so you can maybe use this PV production to run a washing machine, for example. So let's get back to the curve. Uh, so that's still the same. So it actually allows you to cut a bit that peak. Maybe the washing machine here or the, yeah, or something you can actually program. You can actually move it when there is sun. So you cut a bit of the production here. And when you add batteries to that, you charge your battery when you have sun, and you just discharge it when there is no sun anymore. So it gets, in red here, you have what is coming from the grid, and it's a lot reduced. Here is a, a summary. You have in violet here your normal grid consumption, what you buy from the grid. And if you add smart energy management, you're gonna cut it a bit. If you add PV, you're gonna cut it during the day. And if you add PV plus smart energy management plus battery storage, you actually can divide your consumption from the grid by seven. So that's one thing, but of course, how much does it cost? Uh, that's a good question. And what we see here, that's for Germany. We are not here yet in Norway, but it's coming. That's the cost of electricity so by kilowatt hour from PV in green and the cost of electricity from the grid in blue. And you, you have here what we call the grid parity point. Uh, it's when the cost is actually the same and we can see here at in Germany, for example, in some cases, PV is cheaper than the electricity from the grid. But the very interesting point is here, the battery, the storage market, it's actually following the same curve as PV a few years before. And the grid parity, including storage, is normally coming this year or next year in Germany. And you heard about that. You heard about Tesla running for, uh, for storage. You heard about other companies. So the, to come back to that, because actually the grid uh, doesn't really like that, of course, that you get independence, and that you get independence with the weather uh, dependent source of energy. So let's speak about a bit about the inverter. Uh, the inverter is the key in a PV solution. That's this small, uh, this small box again, which is converting DC current to, to AC current. Uh, that's the communication points between your production and the grid. And it has multiple features which can help. 
uh, when it comes to bigger scales, when it comes to a lot of houses with PV, a lot of buildings, a lot of uh, PV plants on the ground too, PV parks. So the inverter has communication features. It can communicate with the grid, it can communicate with you, you can communicate with the inverter, you can actually remotely control it. So that's a big advantage for the grid operators. And the biggest advantage uh, is actually reactive power. So I'm going to try to explain in a very simple way what is reactive power, because that's a key feature here. Uh, that won't be a lecture about power engineering, don't worry. So that's uh, AC current. Uh, that's a classical curve of AC current with the current and the voltage. And actually, something happens uh, when certain type of load, you have a dephasing here. And this creates what we call reactive power. Um, so here, P is actually the active power. So that's what you need for your component, your electrical component, to work. And you have this kind of loss, the reactive power. So that's the amount, the combination of the two is the amount of what the grid has to provide you. And of course, that can be a huge loss for the grid. Let's explain that in a, in a simpler way. <laughs> you have a huge bicycle, and you have some red guys bicycling for you. That's the power production. And you have the blue guys just sitting. That's the lows of the grid. That's just electrical equipment. And actually, it happens that the blue guy saw something, so it's just going on the side like that. <laughs> so, so the point is actually the red, one of the red guys has to compensate it, even if they're still going straight. And that's going to be a loss. Well, if you didn't get it, I even have a better example. <laughs> this one everybody will understand. <laughs> So you have a glass, and you're wasting some place for good beer in your glass for the foam. Uh, and that's the reactive power. Well, my point here is actually that an, a PV inverter can provide, not beer, but uh, reactive power uh, to stabilize the grid. And that's a huge thing, because even by night, even when it doesn't produce anything, it provides, it compensates this loss for the grid. That's the biggest advantage for PV. Uh, and it's actually pretty new. That's a new feature. So there is a lot of people doing research and development on that and how it can eventually become a business model too, because it's still something provided from your PV plant. Um, frequency and voltage support is also, as I said, the inverter can be controlled remotely. Uh, so that's something that the grid operator could also play with if, the, if something happens to the grid. Congestion management is actually that's a decentralized uh, source of energy we're speaking about. So if a line gets congested, actually this decentralized way of speaking about the new grid is a good thing. And islanding operation. With this smart home solution, for example, if the grid shuts off, a tree falls into a line or something, you still have electricity in your home. And other features. Uh, so as I said, there is a lot of RED. You can actually have a look uh, on that after if you want. Um, but to see that in a bigger picture, uh, because not speaking about the house, we're speaking about the future of the electrical grid. The smart grid. Everybody heard the name, I guess. Nobody really knows what it is. Uh, that's like a technical mystery. There is nothing new in smart grids. That's just new technologies combining together to get a better electrical grid. So that's a classical grid evolving with IT and communications, which is the key of a smart grid. Uh, the centralized renewable energy, which came uh, the last years and is still going to come in our everyday life. And the smart consumption, again, so with batteries or not, or just energy management. Because the grid looks like that today, that's very linear. You have your big production center, you have the lines distributing energy until your house, the consumption center. But the plan and the future is uh, the smart grid, which looks, looks like more like a web uh, with everything interconnected, productions everywhere, uh, PV on every building, with smart energy management communicating with the other building, maybe the neighbor building, 
to adapt the energy flows from production to consumption. Uh, so that smart home solution is actually the small version of a bigger picture. So just to conclude, because I see the time is running, three things. Um, smart energy consumption combined with decentralized renewable, like PV, and energy storage, which is coming, that's a winner combo, and that's the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I think we will all remember your illustration with the bear <laughs> glass yeah, and rea reactive power. Yeah, Very good. Very power. good. We'll think about that next time.